Welcome to the Four Listeners Program. Welcome aboard, everybody. Thanks for checking us out this week. What up, everybody? I'm Spear. On the mics with me this week is the Z-Man. What's up, Z? <laughs> we are children of the eighties. Right, let's get let's get this show on the road. On the other mic is the mighty Ganthor. What's up, Ganthor? Hey, how's it going, buddy? It's going all right. This week, something must be done about Nintendo. Nintendo purveyors of the, the Mario games, the Metroid games, my my personal favorite, the Zelda games. I love hate how you say Mario. Mario? See, Mario Ma- Mario, Mario. Manningham. You, you Mario Manningham. Do you want me to say Mario? Is that what you want me to say? Well, I'm just saying I say Mario and you say Mario. Yeah, it's, just, and it's, it's like one of those little things that that bug me, you know, but... Is it tomato, tomato, let's call the whole thing off? I, I mean, I don't want to say anything that dorky, but... <laughs> Well, I, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just busting on you in a in a little affectionate I, I, kind of way. Thank you. Well, I appreciate the affection this week instead of the uh, all out uh, rancor that you I'm usually. I'm trying come to with. be a better person. I appreciate that. Um, Nintendo has had something of a stumble with their latest console, the Wii U. I mean, coming off the tremendous success of the the Wii, the the Wii with the with the Wii Remote was one of those things that had phenomenal success. I mean, it, it found its way into the homes of grandparents. Like, grandparents were playing Wii Bowling. Yep. Finally, Nintendo comes out with the Wii U, which was going to be HD compatible, and it was also going to have a, another new, unique way of playing games. It was going to have that gamepad thing. I mean, Nintendo, Nintendo's got that, that DS, DSi, 3DS cash cow. I mean, they, just, they print money with those things, and they, they decided to try to bring that second screen magic to the home via the Wii U. There was an article released recently on Eurogamer.net that was kind of a behind-the-scenes as to why the Wii U's launch has been so terrible. And the reason for it seems to be that Nintendo made several big mistakes in the launch and continued support of the system. The first was they underestimated how powerful the next gen systems were going to be. See, they've done that. They've made that mistake a few times going back to the GameCube in terms but, of but, but I mean, does, does it even make sense for them to even consider what the competitors are doing? Because they don't really give a shit. They're, they've always been about the game and about the story and about the you know the the narrative of the game rather than the actual pixelation and and polygon count. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, they they always said that the uh, you know when they when they were making the argument around SD versus HD, if you will, they were always saying that the games will win out. And they yeah. will. You put the word you put the word Mario on it or you put the word Zelda on it or or Metroid on it, everyone's going to buy it. See, I don't see what I was going to say. I I feel like it depends on the their target audience, right? And and saying, you know, the games and the experience will win out kind of implies or requires a mature enough consumer who can recognize those things and not just the the superficial type stuff. So what I'm getting at is you've got people buying Metroid because they played Metroid as a kid on Nintendo or Super Nintendo. And then it's out for the GameCube or the Wii or whatever systems it came out for. And it's the nostalgia purposes driving that. And if you look at, I'm assuming, a majority of the video game market being, you know, prepubescent boys... They don't necessarily care about that. They don't have the nostalgia, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. What they've got are Xbox with Halo and yeah, and all they know is Call of Duty, Halo, right? right? That's that's their Metroid. That's their Mario. Master right. Chief is the new Mario for this generation, if you will. Because here's the funny thing: it's like I have a Wii U. I never owned a NES, but I have one now. But I never owned it like back in the day, and I never owned a GameCube. So I never remember playing. Like for me, I never think of. Nintendo as ever having anything that is not Mario, Metroid, or or like something Donkey Kong or or Zelda. Those like the the, the Nintendo properties, the only ones I ever think of because I know they have it has like Batman's Arkham Asylum on there. I'm sure uh, it's got Call of Duty. Is it got Call of Duty or it's got um Probably. Assassin's Creed? Right. It's got Assassin's Creed Four. It's got Call of Duty Ghosts. So it's got all these games that have all the violence in it, right? That's right. Yeah, and and you know going all the way back to to like the. Um to the Nintendo 64, 
they actually put Resident Evil 2 on a cartridge, which at the time was crazy because they put full motion video on it. I'm really geeking out now. There was this game called Eternal Darkness for the GameCube. To this day, is one of the top ten games I've ever played in my life. You know, the the Zelda games have been have been consistently good no matter what platform you're on. But the 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 Wii U is going to get creamed, creamed because of the the lack of third party software support. You 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 mentioned that it you know they have uh, the Batman games, yep. uh, Assassin's Creed Four, Call of Duty, I think, and then that's it. That's where it stops because the the studios that make these big what they call triple A games are walking away from the Wii U in droves because they can't develop for it. The development time, the development tool set is horrendous. The support that they're getting from Nintendo is non-existent. And nobody's buying the damn things. So there's no money to be made. So there's no money to be made. And people are walking away in droves. Yeah, and- I, I read that article that you sent out. and it's just, But it's just pretty cool just like seeing the whole, the whole life cycle from the developer side of, of it and, uh, and hearing, you know, hearing how they have to integrate and do all this other shit. And they're like spending so much time trying to like fine tune it and make it work for, for that specification of that hardware just to have them swap out the, the chipset the next day and not even give you a heads up. And then they're, you know, they were saying about the online shit is like, yeah, we're trying to make an online game here. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll get you that before we go live. And they got them like, what, a week before they went live with this, with the application? Yeah. These are things you don't do to developers, right? No. The developers like stability. Developers like knowing that they're going to get predictable results. These kinds of things kill a, a, a development team of a, of a game. That was that was crazy. The uh, like they couldn't even talk to the development team who made the hardware because they were all in Japan and they didn't have anyone who could translate. That was that, there were two there were two parts of the story that I thought were spectacular. The first was that if they sent the, if they sent an email to Nintendo of America and it had to go over to the Wii U development team, they had to find translators to translate the question into Japanese, which took like days. Get it over to the developers, get someone to look at it, and then get an answer back, and then translate that back into English. And hopefully don't lose the context right. or any information along the way. Right. You're like you're playing a telephone game. How, how, is, that, how is that a support mechanism? Uh, <laughs> like it's ridiculous. That was, that was ridiculous. The other, the other thing I thought was, was truly hilarious was when, when they were talking about how this new Nintendo network was going to come into being, right? Um, you know, to, to replace the friend code nonsense, right? It was going to be Nintendo's online service. They're like, well, where is it? Well, we're working on it. Well, you know, what is it going to do? Is it going to do anything like the Xbox, Xbox Live and PlayStation? And the answer they got back from the engineers was, well, you know, trying to draw a parallel to those other two services isn't going to work because nobody's ever used those other two services. Me- meaning that nobody in Nintendo had ever had an Xbox Live account. Right. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. How does that happen? How does that happen? I mean, how are you not looking at what your competitors are doing? And trying to learn from them. How are you not standing on the shoulders of giants? Why, why? Why? It's more fun to invent the wheel, dude. And because they were trying to reinvent the wheel, the, they were saying that, I don't know if you guys remember, we, when the Wii U launched, there was a, a huge day one patch that you had to download. And I know from experience, it took me a good hour to download it. That if you didn't download it, games would, games would be like half functional. Because you couldn't have gotten online, you couldn't have gotten onto the network, the Nintendo network, without that patch. That's like saying, "Hey, here's your new car, but if you want to you want to drive it on the highway, <laughs> right? You gotta take it to the shop first, right? Like, how does it get to that point, right? Like, it, it's obviously meeting some artificial date from somewhere that has no bearing on the state of the product in general. Well, that's your stake. Like, that's your shareholders. That's 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 Wall Street, right? I, I mean, that yeah, those are commitments that you've made, right? Launch a new console by this time. <laughs> that's it." I mean, we get you get that. You, I don't know if you get that. I get that. You know, the the account reps are are selling shit that they we haven't built. Have no idea how long it takes to build. Yeah. But they're throwing dates out there <laughs> just so they can make bonuses. And then I got to work late. Yeah, I think we've all experienced that at one time or another. Trying to trying to cash the checks that the sales team has written. Yeah. Yeah. The the irony is that of the of the games that are out for the Wii U that Nintendo has published, the the first party games, they're spectacular. All of them. The problem, the problem with all of the first-party games is that they're, they're basically trading on that nostalgia that you were talking about, Ganthor, right? They're Mario games. Who's not going to yeah. buy a Mario game, you know? 
Right. I agree with you. It's I'm a, I'm afraid Nintendo's going to end up having to go the route Sega did. Where they where start they s- stop it's... manufacturing hardware and they're just purely a software house. I think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a terrible idea. I I mean I guess if the the culture or whatever you want to call it at Nintendo will survive. I mean maybe that's maybe the hardware competition is what's detracting from them producing great things. You know, it's funny. It's funny you say that they're they they could just be in the software business because they could trade on that nostalgia. They're starting to do it now. They just released this this game called NES Remix, and what they do is they give you uh, like imagine imagine little uh, mini game versions of some of your favorite games like Mario, Zelda, Balloon Balloon Race, Donkey Kong, um, where you're trying to get three stars to compete uh, to complete just one little one little puzzle like. Um, get ten one ups by jumping on a uh, a turtle shell ten times. Mm. That seems like you're grasping. That seems like you're grasping for straws. Well, that's there. What, that's that that is where Nintendo is at right now. That might be jumping the shark. Are we at that point? I mean, is has is Nintendo jumping the shark? I mean, what what was like like Corey said? What was the last real thing they've actually released other than Pikmin? I mean, they, they all they do is they rehash the old thing, and they're still good at making levels and making designs, but you know. You took Mario, you made him 3D, you put him in outer space, and then you made him paper. Yep. But all but all of those games were, were phenomenal. And they're but, all great, yeah. They're, they're silly, but they're still fun and enjoyable to play. But that, but what I mean, else? What, what, do you, what, what do you got for me now? The, the, la- the latest Super Mario 3D World game is really, really, really good. For the Wii U? For the Wii U. Really yeah, I heard, I heard that was awesome. It's really good. But again, it's, it's the same kind of thing. It's like, I, I've seen this. Yeah. I like playing it, but I've seen it. Show me something new. Give me a new franchise. Give me a new character. Give me new something. And you don't you, you don't rely on the you don't rely on Nintendo for that. You rely on the Ubisofts and the EAs and the the Take Twos of the world. And now you're not going to get the Assassin's Creeds, the Grand Theft Autos, the 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 Last of Us, the whatevers, right? These celebrated big games. You don't see. You're not going to see them on Nintendo. You're going to have to get. A new con- uh, an Xbox or a PlayStation. Yeah, but again, I'm not I'm not playing I'm not playing with my Wii to, so I can play these games, and and in that's usually that mindset just because they never had any high res games or any high def games. Their games are always have been low def, and I'm like, all right, there's no reason for me to play a fucking AAA game on a system that's looking like I'm playing a VHS tape. <laughs> right, right, and especially for the little kids, that's not going to create or oh, yeah, no. any sort of nostalgia or love of or whatever. For, yeah, they're going to be like, this is stupid. This, yeah. <laughs> this sucks. My iPhone's got better graphics. Yeah, right. It does. Yeah. Well, it absolutely does. <laughs> right. So maybe they should give up on the hardware and just sell make, out. Yeah, make Nintendo iPhone games. Software. No, not not necessarily iPhone. Just concentrate on the franchises, right? Well, it's funny. It's The iPhone thing would be interesting because, I mean, people are emulating the NES games and they're putting it on the mobile phones anyway. Right. Right? I mean, it's like it's an untapped... Resource. I mean, they don't want to. Comp- they don't want to cannibalize the the audience for their their own handheld. But I mean, if you charged two dollars to put Mario on your phone, like an honest to god, not pirated, legal version of Mario on your phone, I mean, you do it. Yeah, I would do it. I mean, two dollars yeah. is a little steep, I think. But I still think that's hilarious too. I can't get over that. You know, where I'll I'll drop a dollar fifty or whatever it is for a. a coke at wawa you know yeah. and i'll piss that out in three hours but the idea of paying more than like a dollar like 99 cents for a game is ridiculous i know i can't i don't know what the deal is it's the going rate uh, nowadays two dollars well there's that whole freemium battle that's yeah. being oh, yeah. waged that's as a, well but a, I, whole, I think nintendo other show. would make a killing if they could re-release their their you know super nintendo and nintendo and like how much money would you pay for dr mario i just paid 15 dollars for it what? Did it, it have the original music? On the on the Wii U. I just paid $15 oh, you're, for you're it. You're ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, see, you're a sucker. I mean, that's they're taking advantage of people with $15. It's Intern's yeah. favorite game. I know, I know, <laughs> and I'm sure it costs money to port it and whatnot, but it's like... But it, wasn't, wait, wait, but it wasn't Dr. Mario. It was Dr. Luigi. And oh, yes, it came with a special Luigi mode with L-shaped uh, capsules. So it's not even the original Dr. Mario? It has the original Dr. Mario. It's got both. See, now now this is an important point. Does it have the original Dr. Mario music? It does. Are you sure about that? Yep. This has both the the fever and the chill. 
Man knows who he's talking about. Wow. Don't mess with me, Gantor. I'm not messing with I'm just, <laughs> I really like Dr. Mario. There, you know how many old Nintendo games I would buy in a second? Which ones? Snake, Rattle, and Roll. There's another one. I think it's called Boonie Run. The Goonies um, was a great game. I like the Goonies. I never played the Goonies. I like the Goonies. That's how I learned that you can use a yo-yo as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Double well, Dragon. The, tell me you wouldn't play some co-op Double Dragon. I absolutely would play co-op Double Dragon. I, I will tell you now that the latest craze is to take old games and remaster them now for the new consoles, like DuckTales. Yeah. DuckTales. Yeah. That, game, that game was the uh, was 8-bit. Was it NES or Super NES? I think that was NES. It was NES, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember playing DuckTales. DuckTales, they just redid. They remastered it. It's the same game with the, all the same controls. Yeah, you hop around with the dude and his cane, and he crushes stuff, right? Yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. Mario style. Yeah, but they went so far as to find the original cast from Ducktales, and instead of you know you would read the words, now they have the the voice actors actually doing. They got the original Scrooge McDuck. That's awesome. That's crazy, dude. And now they release it for the Xbox. They did the same with um with uh, the Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion game from Sega Genesis. They they remastered that. That's what the, that's what the the latest trend now is to is to take these old games and then release. Updated, updated graphics versions of these things. So, did either one of you get one of the uh, one of the new systems, the uh, the Xbox One or the PlayStation Four? I own a PlayStation Four. I bought it. I pre-ordered it because I wanted to make sure I had it. I wasn't make sure I didn't, you know, wasn't didn't miss out because the holiday and all that. I heard they were going to have short supply, and I bought it. And I have yet to play a game on it. <laughs> it's been what two months now. Yeah, because uh, you, what you get the demos, right? Like you get free access to demos. Yeah, yeah. I was, I, was, I was fucking with all the demos. If you're like a PlayStation Gold member, you get like free downloads and shit like that. But I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, I have all these. I played all the, the free demos, and I'm like, all right, these all suck. I don't want to buy these games. And there's no games. But at least with this, as opposed to like the Wii U, you know the games are coming. Yeah, it's just going to take longer because these yeah. games are really ridiculous, probably to make. Yeah. But you know the games are going to come. Yep. And these consoles are built to last like seven years now. Yeah, this is a ten, well, 10 years. 10 years. These, yeah, I think yeah. it's a 10-year life cycle on these, yeah, yeah. on these consoles. And I'm like, oh, great, this is awesome. I, I'll, I will wait patiently. And I'm sitting here looking at, like, the touchpad on it and how sexy it is. And all I'm doing is playing PlayStation 3 games. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I, won't, I won't buy a new console. Like, I have, I, I have the Wii U. I bought it last year. I have the Xbox 360. I think I've had it for maybe two or three years. I won't buy an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 for quite a while for that specific reason. Because they, because they haven't figured out how to make games for them yet. Like the launch games, they they looked, they looked cool, they looked good, but they they're they're not even close to what these things are going to look like by the end of it. By the end of it, it's going to look like a Pixar movie, <laughs> you know. That's what they're saying is they wanted to make it so you can actually render Avatar live. Right. That's that's the quality they're shooting for. Yeah, and I think it'll get there, you know, eventually, which is why you wait. Yeah, I'm still waiting to buy a PlayStation Three so I can buy a remade version of a game I loved on PlayStation Two. Which one? Ico. So, so let me ask you this, there, Ganthor. Would you buy a console specifically for a game? Yeah, just I'm gonna do that for Ico. So, do they have Ico for Xbox, I'm, or is it? Is no, it... it's it's a PlayStation exclusive, I think. So, so I mean, that's a good question. What 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 uh what allegiances are you guys? I used to buy everything. Then like, you got I had, then, I, then you got yeah. married and had kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had Dreamcast. I had PlayStation Two. I had Xbox. I had GameCube. All at the same time, right? And then, yeah, I, I, I had kids and got married, and now I don't have a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. I do have a 360, but... How about, how about you, Z? Have you... Have you... Yeah, I'm a, I, well, I just told you, I'm PS4, I got PS3. I've been PS all the way. I've never owned an Xbox, and I've been, I've been Nintendo. I've had, had uh, all the last systems. Until, until I bought the Xbox two or three years ago, I have only ever had Nintendos. That's not true. I started with an Atari 2600. Well, that doesn't Coleco count. here. An Atari 2600, and I had an Atari 7800, and then I and then I got the that I got the NES, and then since then, you know, my wife likes to say we're Nintendo people. Well, is ahead. that because she likes it or because it's child friendly? No, this is before kids. Oh. <laughs> we've we've always been Nintendo people. In fact, when we started dating, we both had Nintendo 64, and I would bring my Zelda cartridge to her place so that I could play. <laughs> She'd let you dock it. Yeah, so I could play Zelda. I would take it with me. I wouldn't leave it there. What are you fucking crazy? If I broke up with her, I'd lost my Zelda game. That is so hilariously cute and, and, <laughs> and sad. sad and sad. <laughs> but we've we've always been Nintendo people. It it took a fair amount of convincing to get so, a Microsoft Xbox in the house. Did you play before or after you banged? 
Uh, while? After. After. It was always while she was getting ready for bed. I would get a few minutes in. That was that was your pillow talk? Well, she'd be, she'd be going, you know, she'd be in the bathroom getting ready for bed, and I'd, be, I'd have a good 10, 15 minutes to play some Zelda. That's how I roll. 10, 10 15 minutes is enough to play anything. Well, I, I, would, I would start, and then she would be sitting there watching. <laughs> oh. So rather than, like, having sex, you would just watch each other play. She would watch me play, yeah. Oh, she doesn't even get to play? Oh, fuck, it's a one-player game, dude. It's Zelda. And girls aren't good at Zelda, dude. No, girls aren't good at Zelda. It's a, it's a boy game. <laughs> uh, Nintendo 64 in college for uh, Mario Kart. Mar- and that was the bomb. That, that was, yes. Mario that Kart 64 that, is, I Golden think, Eye. the best version. Golden I never Eye. played GoldenEye. It was always Mario Kart. GoldenEye was one of those games that, you know, you, you had, you lost a lot of hours, especially if you had four controllers. And you lived in a dorm. And you lived in a dorm. We didn't do Cold Night. We always had Mario Kart battles. That's what it turned out to. And I remember, like, smoking up and, like, just, I wasn't smoking up, of course. But <laughs> people were smoking up and there was, like, just, like, playing Mario Kart. That's what you did. Yeah, that's what you did. You know what's funny about that game? Is the, uh, the, the you, it's, it's a third, it's a, it's a, f- a first person, first person shooter, right? Was it a first Mario person? Kart? Or thir- no, 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 the Golden Eye. Yeah, yeah. The, you could see where everyone else was. Right, because they were on the screen with you. They were on the screen with you, right? And that was supposed to be the cool thing about the Wii U is that, you know, you could play one per you could play like, like predator mode, where like one person's the predator and everybody else is trying to kill them. That's right. That's and the right, predator yeah. gets a special control where they can't see where the predator is, but the predator can see the screen where everybody else is. Yeah. And so it was like different views of everything and be able to section it off like that was supposed to be really cool. Yeah, and those games are really cool. Right, the the, the little mini games that they gave you that they gave you that ability, they are really cool. You know, but it's. I don't know. It's just one of those what things. What was they... your punishment for a screen looking? What was your you, punishment? What do you mean? You can't punish someone for screen looking. You have to look at the screen. You mean for in GoldenEye? During, well, back in the so, day? No, what you were talking about in Predator mode, right? We had the same same type of situation in Halo. We were playing, we used to play uh, Invis snipers on boarding ships, boarding party, whatever that map was. Yeah. And so you could, well, people would notice when one of the other screens was <laughs> You know, looking at your character, and then you'd you'd move out of the way at the last minute, way too conveniently, right? Right. And so we call screen looker, and then the other guy had to stand still so you could shoot him. I don't know. <laughs> and so I, I I'm just amazed that that didn't come up in a game like Goldeneye. It did, which oh, is sure, I don't yeah. think anyone gave a shit. No, uh, I, I think I, it's just assumed you were going to do that. Yeah. Oh. And the only rule I remember was no odd job. What was wrong with Odd Job? Is the, he super overpowered? Yeah, because he was because he had that hat because he had the hat, and I remember no Odd Job. That was the that was the one rule you couldn't pick Odd Job. I got banned from uh, a few players in um, Soul Calibur on Dreamcast. Do you ever play that? Yeah, Mm-mm. I was. Uh, it's the that's the sword fighting version of Street Fighter, I guess you could say. Yeah, but that was like it was like Tekken, and well, it was all yeah, it's like, more like Tekken. It's yeah. the 3D sword fighting fighting game. And I never played that shit. Oh, oh dude, dude uh, it was awesome, but. Yeah. I went on a streak. I went like forty-eight now with Sophia, and then they said, "You, you know, you can't play her anymore. You got to play somebody else." So I chose somebody else, and I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was <laughs> like that. Then I dropped I like the controller Super, and walked away. Super Street Fighter. I was like that. Who was your character? It didn't matter. It was just pick any character. I'm going to. Who beat was you. your character? I didn't have you didn't random pick. I didn't have a specific character. I had mastery of all characters. You know what? I want to. I want to fuck you up in Street Fighter now. I will download it for the Wii U, and we'll play it. All right. Deal. I, I can get I it. I will crush you. I seriously doubt it. I will fuck you up. That and NBA Jam. I, I won money playing NBA Jam. Oh, I never liked that game. That, Super Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat 2, and NBA Jam. I won is money. The, is that the I'm on fire, he's on yeah, fire yeah, game? Yeah. yeah. I bought NBA Jam for the, Ooh, for the shakalaka. Wii. Boom, shakalaka. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to play me in those games, man. I'm telling you. It's not a good idea. I'm t- I'm telling you I'm calling you out. All right. Not afraid of you in Street Fighter. I, fi- I finally found a good use for my Wii U is kicking your ass. Let's make it happen. <laughs> so what did we learn? What did we learn about Nintendo? Z Man. Innovate or die. Innovate or die. <laughs> nice. Gantor. That you are the biggest shit talker when it comes to Street Fighter, and I will wreck you. You have no idea what kind of a hornet's nest you've stepped into, sir. I am not afraid. I will fuck you up, and then I will fuck you up again just for fun. You know what? I predict I blank you. Not likely. Not likely, sir. All right. All right. Uh, Well, I learned that it may be more prudent at this point for Nintendo to get out of the hardware business. As long as they're going to trade on their nostalgia, 
Might as well do it on the other consoles. Or mobile. Or mobile, yep. So if you like Nintendo or, you know, if you have a Wii U, you want to let us know, why don't you go ahead and post it on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash 4listeners or 4listeners.com. You could check us out on Stitcher Radio or on the iTunes. Just search for 4 Listeners and we'll pop right on up. We thank you for checking us out this week, and we hope that you will check us out again next week. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Bye.